sun is super bright. Hello and welcome back. This week I'm very excited because I'm reviewing Food Festival and Religion by Francesca Powell. And this is a little bit of a tricky book, you guys, because it's different from any other one that I've ever reviewed on this channel. It's an academic book. So rather than just being your standard nonfiction, like a little bit ago about George Washington or a while ago about like grief or something, this is a very much research based. Now, as someone who really enjoys school and academia and has written some academic research myself, very limitedly, I really enjoy this. However, it's definitely written for a particular audience. So if academia isn't really your shtick, this probably isn't the book for you. That said, chapters three through five are really, really interesting, but I'll get into that in a second. So while this is definitely more for the academically minded, I do think that any reader might find some things that are kind of interesting in this book. So food festival and religion has to do with festivals largely. And so in talking with Francesca Howell, which I was able to do, which is super cool, she told me that as an Italian American who spent time living in Italy, studying in Italy, and then eventually just being really inspired by what she lived while there, she decided to do research in Italy. And while there she quote, couldn't avoid festivals, like you could throw a stone and you'd hit a festival. And so that really inspired her to look at the deeper meanings. So basically what she did was she traveled all around Italy, she conducted hundreds of interviews, and she looked specifically at six different festivals in five different cities and evaluated them to see how much does the sense of place impact the festival, its meaning to the people, and its meaning for the overall culture. And some of the things that she found were just really, really interesting. Um, there's one quote that I think is just fascinating. It says, Harvey wrote that to destroy is to de-story. Place-centered stories emerge in festival culture, celebrating and honoring place and people. And I just think that's really beautiful because especially for those in the writing and reading communities, we're all about story. And in my own academic research, I was a comm major in my undergrad, I looked at story as a way to connect and I looked at story as a way to disseminate information. And so I think it's just really, really interesting how closely tied story is to festival. And that's something that I think both academic and lay readers might find interesting about this book is that there's so much potential for making connections. Because for example, I'm taking this Native American spirituality class. And while one example of a connection between that class and this book is the fact that one of the researchers is the same, um, how frequently mentions Basso, the research, the ethnographic researcher, and he has come, his uh, archeological ethnographic work has come up in my class as well. But what's really interesting is just that it makes you kind of see your own festivals and your own kind of cultural experiences a little bit differently. Because even though I think it's pretty safe to say that we all realize that festival and sense of place and the vibe of a certain location is really relatable. I don't think we always think about it in those kind of academic terms. But yeah, so I think that's just a really relatable element of this book that while seemingly out of reach because it's academic, maybe it's a little bit closer than we realize. So chapters three through five. Chapters three through five are the chapters in which Howell really starts talking about the different festivals. She goes in depth, she quotes a bunch of people, she explains what these festivals are, she shares anecdotes from these festivals, and it's also where her voice kind of shifts from lecturing intellectual to, oh my gosh, I went to Italy and I was at this festival, let me tell you all about it. 
And while there's still definitely a sense of professionalism, I think the tonal shift is just really warm and inviting in a way. And so it made it just very enjoyable as a reader. And also, who doesn't love to learn about different festivals? Like, I thought it was super interesting when talking about the Badalisk Festival, how there's a hunt and you chase this little, well, it's not little, this big horned serpenty creature through the town. And once it's caught, it goes and spills the tea as it were, and like calls people out. And I think it was just really interesting too. And another example of, for example, the Celtic New Year, how there are all these different stalls and there are all these people and they feel like they can finally wear what they want to wear or express their druidic and pagan beliefs in the ways that are comfortable to them. Like it just was so interesting to hear these people's stories. And so that kind of goes back to that, to destroy is to de-story idea that festivals really allow people to embrace their stories. And I think that's just really beautiful. As a pseudo researcher, I loved at the end, um, cause I think whenever you get to see a peek inside the writer's kind of process, it's a really fascinating opportunity. And in this case, we got to see the researcher's process and how the researcher takes all of this data and distills it into something that actually makes sense. Because this isn't going to be something like in the hard sciences where you have all this data and these numbers and it's like, this is a quantifiable fact. I mean, the introduction to her analysis and conclusions literally calls it methods that index the unquantifiable. Um, so what she did was she looked at how the festivals were organized, the depth of connection. So like she looked at like food and she looked at crafts, stuff like that. Materiality of power of place manifested through ritualization and then perceptions of sense of place as reported in interviews. And based off of both her observed data and then the ethnographic interviews that she collected, she was able to give them a numerical score to see like how strong is a sense of place associated with this festival. And I just thought that was super interesting. And what was even more helpful is that she actually breaks down like why each festival got the score that it did for each of those subsections. So on like a slightly nerdy logistical note, I just thought that was really cool. Overall, I did enjoy Food Festival and Religion. It's definitely not for everybody. It is an academic book. It is a dense book. It's not long, but it's packed full of information and packed full of story. So I do think that it would be interesting for readers, um, but you just kind of have to have an open mind and you have to realize that it's not going to be kind of the traditional story but there are a lot of stories within it. It also provides a really interesting learning opportunity because like I had no idea that there's a growing pagan and druidic movement in Italy and so that learning that was really interesting. And as a female it was kind of interesting because it sounds like a lot of these druidic pagan movements that are emerging and developing seem to have kind of a feminist lens so I think that's also a really interesting thing to know and something that would actually provide for fascinating further research. So that's all I have for Food Festival and Religion. Next week I'll be reviewing Jessica Olson's upcoming book, A Forgery of Roses. This is coming out in March. Very excited because the Wandering Jellyfish Bookshop hooked me up with another advanced reader copy, so thank you to them. And I'll be back next week with my thoughts on that. In the meantime, happy reading and thanks.